All right, I'm going to try to do a coach's eye analysis of this fight between Sir Marcus and Sir Davin. So that's Sir Davin on the left, Sir Marcus on the right. These are just pickup fights that are handled at July Coronation in Ontario, if I'm not mistaken. Obviously during July. So let's take a look at the fight. We'll go through the first couple passes. So you see Davin throwing some feints, onside shots. Marcus is countering with mostly snaps and onside shots. Good leg wrap. Okay, so let's stop there and we'll go back. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going the wrong way. So let's go through and take a look at, blow by blow, some of these early moves. All right, and again, neither of these guys are fighting super seriously at this point. So here we see Davin. If you look at the, the timeline on the bottom, when it goes left, I'm going backwards. When it goes right, I'm going forwards. So Davin's got that D-grip sword. He's stepping back, and as soon as he puts his weight on that back leg, it looks like he's the backup is actually a feint. So he's actually baiting Marcus in, pushes off that back leg with a big thrust, but Marcus hasn't stepped in quick enough. Now, that response to the shield is perhaps a little, little much. You see how far it comes open, but Marcus immediately pushes his weight back because he recognizes the threat now that he's opened the shield up. So we move on. Davin, if I remember correctly, Davin does this a fair bit. As the sword comes up, it feints a face thrust. And then immediately comes over the head and back down for an onside leg wrap. Now, Marx's leg is left fairly far behind. And his legs are split open, so you can see he's got to push that shield tip pretty far back. And he moves his left leg to bring it behind the defense some. So Davin's throwing the back edge wrap. And you can see he's actually rolled the sword in his hand. So the blade is actually, the back edge of the blade, the false edge of the blade is on point, but his hand position looks weird. That's because Davin's rotated the sword in his hand. So his hand makes it look like that, that was landing flat, but his technique is such that it actually landed edge on. Regardless, Marcus blocked it. He's pretty good at blocking leg wraps. You can also see Marcus's hand is up. He's looking for a shot that would come down from our perspective, the right-hand side of Davin's shield, but he's got his shield in a loose strap. Uh, so he's holding the shield mostly with the hand. Uh, and it's blocking his head. He's got the entire shield out and tabled in front of him to kind of block off that angle. So you can see Marcus is looking for a shot. If he throws a Davin's arm here, it's probably just going to skip down, so Marcus doesn't take the shot. Meanwhile, the blow landed heavy enough. You can see it actually rocked Marcus's shield a little bit as he's stepping forward, and Davin is now recovering. If I rewind a little bit, you can see he throws that wrap, Recovers with a bit of a teardrop and is throwing right into Marcus's head, which Marcus is able to relatively easily pick up with that shield, despite the fact it rocks him pretty hard. Also notice how much hip motion Davin is putting into the recovery. So here is uh, right hip is forward. He's taking a step back with the left leg and rotates his hip so that now his right hip is well far forward. So that's a pretty hard shot, but Marcus has it blocked. Pretty easy openers. Now as they get back into range, Marcus here throws a standard onside snap. Relatively wide from the body. It could be a little bit tighter angle. You can see how far his hand is out to the right. Um, so Davin reads that, picks it up with the front edge of the shield, and then brings the sword up as a sort of double guard against it. So he's blocking with the shield and the sword blade. And he's also in a position where that coming off his sword, if it does in fact connect, is going to wind him up across his body for an offside leg. Here it comes. Marcus reads that easily. Might have connected a little bit, but you can see the shield picked up a lot of it. So it might have touched a bit, but probably not much. Marcus is now pushing the offensive because he sees Davin's shield is a bit out of position. You can also see Davin took that big step back when he threw that offside. So Marcus is now hunting for that head and right shoulder uh, and is leaning pretty far forward. That shield's out of position, um, but he also knows that Davin does not have a lot of good threats from his current body position. Marcus is a little slow getting that shot out, or he's waiting to see if that opening's there because Davin can cross up and block with his shield, which he does. He's also got the... Notice Davin's return is bringing the sword up in front of him, so he's got a pretty strong guard against any blow that Marcus throws there the entire time. Now you can see Davin is looking for Marcus's leg underneath the edge of his own shield. He sees about two, three inches of target above that knee cop. That's the, that's the lowest you're allowed to throw in the SCA. Let me see if I can draw a line. That's about the lowest you're allowed to throw in the SCA is where that blue line is. Uh, in other organizations, you're allowed to throw lower. So Davin's looking for that, seeing if it's an opening. 
And Marks' shield, as he's coming forward, has started to push forward. And yes, it's actually opening further. So I don't quite know what Marks is thinking. There's coming. To me, this, I mean, I'm not seeing it from Marks' helmet, but to me, this looks like it's an obvious onside leg. Maybe Marks is reading it as an offside body, which would really hurt. Um, if this was, in fact, a blow that was going to come over Davin's head and into Marks's armpit or deep in the offside body, that would really hurt. Really what it's going to do is come in here. So it could be that Marks is pushing his shield over to block that shot. Um, so here we see Davin throws that leg wrap, and he throws it actually as a wrap. He could throw it onside probably and still land, but throwing it as a wrap lets him get an even sweeter angle. So Marcus, now he's got that weight on that leg. He's still moving forward, can't drop right away. He's going to finish his motion. Because at speed, that's all happening pretty quick. And Marcus is, is continuing his momentum forward, trying to land the butt wrap probably on Davin. You can't really see. Davin's now going high. For a follow-up wrap to the head, Marx's shield is well up blocking that. Honestly, if Davin had thrown, instead of for this leaping head wrap, had thrown a body wrap, you can see that Marx's body is pretty open right here. So if Davin had thrown that lower, that would have been a humming body wrap, uh, but he's going for the head. This is also getting Davin out of the way as he counter-rotates from whatever wrap Marcus was trying to throw. Marcus is also dropping at this point because he's felt the leg shot. And Davin's out. Now this is one, Davin's still sort of recovering. A little hard to tell, but it looks like his sword is actually up over Marx's head. There's also a chance that it could have hit him, but Davin is also probably blind from his shield at this point. So it doesn't know Marx's head was right there, I'm guessing. Now look at this chamber up that Davin's doing. He's always rotating his body back and forth. Look, he's got the sword across his body and he's all wound up. You can see that he could easily throw a pretty powerful counter rotation offside from here. Uh, but instead takes the step back and is guarding himself, and that sword blade's ready to come up if Marcus throws an onside headshot. He's also probably letting Marcus get ready. Marcus is now chasing from his knees, sort of walking forward on his knees, and you can see he's coming forward for that offside head, but he's at a pretty deep range now that Marcus is, or now that Davin is backed up. So if anything, that just hits the back of Davin's shield, maybe a little tag on the body, not much. So that's a little bit of a walkthrough of that opening exchange, right? So you can see that we can get into quite good detail. Let's watch the next exchange. Or maybe Davin took that body shot, don't you? Regardless, here they go for the next round. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Okay, Davin fakes the thrust again. Marx is doing kind of his traditional body drop to gain momentum so that was a sort of a body shift to throw that offside with power now Marcus right now he knows Davin although very powerful and fast not a gunfighter so he's left his head relatively open let's take a look at that exchange so right here Marcus knows um, that with this sword back guard he's got a good offense I'm going to go back a little oops sorry I keep going the wrong way so if Marx is going up against a really fast gunfighter, what he'll do is keep the sword close to his head, uh, in front of his head. So the shield's blocking the body and legs, but you see the sword, if he brought it in front of his helmet, he'd be guarding his head a little bit. As he steps in normally against a really fast fighter, he's going to bring that sword in front of his head, but he thinks from Davin's position and with Davin's uh, body mechanics, he's going to be able to read those attacks. So Davin, once again, thrusting to the face, as I said, he sometimes does, as I recall, or feinting the thrust getting ready now he's pumping out and he's ready to throw the onside shots um, and this one yep it's gonna be another onside leg Marcus reads it throws the counter offside to the head but Davin's left the shield up and is ducking pretty deep so that counter offside for Marcus if anything doesn't connect super hard it's hard to tell if it even hits um, when this is running at speed you probably hear the sound of Davin's shield Marcus's shield also probably blocks the leg a little bit so there's one exchange. Oh, no, it looks like Davin's shot did, in fact, kind of hard to see from this angle, but it looks like Marcus felt it in the leg under the shield there. So Marcus drops. Now this, Marcus will probably be the first to admit, not a great shield defense. Better to drop it and leave the point down instead of see how the point's rotating back? That actually shortens the shield defense. Here, with a shield like this, it's as low as the knee. When he's rotated, the point moves to the back, and is not offering much defense and then meanwhile this target becomes open so Davin's taking advantage of that and hit just below it 
Um, this is probably just a function of the fact that Marcus is playing, uh, you know, pickups and stuff like that. Is coming back from a bit of a break. So he takes the leg shot. And a little bit of chatting. They decide to continue to fight on clean. Maybe Davin says it's not a great shot. I don't really know. Regardless, they're just sort of doing pickups. So we move forward. Here's the next exchange. Once again, Davin from this position, low sword, fake or actual thrust to the face, actual thrust to the face this time. So you see when he comes into this position, he's often fainting. He's ready to throw. We've already seen it twice. The faint to the thrust to the face to the leg. This time, Marcus has left his shield down. So Davin says, all right, I'm going to finish the thrust. Marcus takes it to the face. Now, this is one of those places where I think Marcus had seen that the previous two were not real threats um, or weren't threats that were followed through on, so it just doesn't respond. Uh, but that's a pretty clean face thrust. All right, here we go, setting up again. Now, you can see Davin's got that sword in front uh, with it canted down a little bit and the shield pushed forward, so that's a pretty active front guard. Marcus uh, would have a hard time throwing an opening shot into the head there without Davin picking it up with a block. Marcus is taking a little bit more of a risk-reward thing here where his the top of his head is relatively open because he doesn't have a sword in front of his head like Davin does, but that lets him have extra power chambered up into his shoulder. And I know that at long range, you've got a little bit more time to react. So as he steps in, he might bring that sword guard forward a little bit. Davin's now just looking at different angles. He's threatening the body chop that would come in and land behind the shield you know, in this direction, but doesn't see it coming. I'm betting, yeah, just always moving, ready to make the attack. But Marks is backed up. The angle's not there. So we see a lot of this sort of posture, counter posture. Now, Davin here's got a pretty open, pretty open stance. Sword leg forward, so he's got range. Marks is shield leg forward, a little bit less range. All right, so here we see the opening attack from Marcus. Marcus is doing a, what looks like, to me this looks clearly like it's gonna be a thrust because it's coming in flat. So if you look at, uh, if you look at Marcus's blade, uh, you can see that it's white facing us. So that's the flat of the blade. So if it was an actual sword, it would be sharp on the fore edge. And the way he's throwing this shot, you can see it's moving flat through the air. So to me, it looks like it's always gonna be a thrust all along. If it was going to be an edge attack, it would have been rotated forward in his hand. So uh, the rotation would have looked a little bit like that, 90 degrees. So to me, this looks like a thrust. I think Davin reads it that way and just fends it. Uh, maybe there's a little touch here between the blades. It looks like Davin might have actually thrust Marcus in the basket hilt or in the blade. That's more than enough to throw the, the thrust off. And Davin's now looking for an angle around Marcus's shield with that offside body. Or offside leg doesn't look like it landed. Um, and you see Davin's always winding up and chambering to throw a blow, even when he's not going to do it. So that's a really strong difference in styles. So Marcus here, offside body shot. Davin leans back. You don't see him do this a lot. Davin's normally really centered in terms of his balance between his feet. Um, so this is a bit of a body lean. It puts a little more weight on his back leg than typical. That's not a bad thing. It's just not something Davin, you see, I personally remember seeing Davin do a lot. Um, continuing on. Okay, so you see Davin once again opening with a fake or faint to the face. We know, we know that he'll fulfill on that if Marcus doesn't respond. See, the shield is responding to that thrust now, so Davin doesn't complete. But it also, that response as Marcus is stepping doesn't leave his leg open. So Davin doesn't have that shot. Looks like another faint thrust. A little hard to tell what's going on now. A lot of posture, counter posture. All right, now moving backwards. So here we see Davin taking a wide step to the left. Marcus is leaning with the body to follow him to Marcus's right. And you can see sort of hunting. He's looking for an opportunity with the sword. Here it looks like he's going onside. Then he sees the opportunity. He's going to, right at this moment, this is an onside shot. You can see it converts to an offside shot. The way his hand, just at this moment, has rotated that direction slightly, um, goes from threatening an onside shot to an offside shot. So here, we go back. This is the start of an onside shot. Little body shift, sword rotation. Now it's looking like an offside shot. So Davin brings the shield up to protect. 
Marcus sees that it, there's no opening there, so cancels the shot. Davin's leaning and looking for that leg shot. Probably Marcus picked it up with the shield. Hard to tell from where we're at. So this is a lot of the kind of like moment-to-moment -moment posture, counter-posture. Um, this is just an opener. Marcus throwing pretty much straight for the shield to set up for what looks like... Oops. Uh, to set up for the uh, snap offside combo. Yep. Now in this case, Marcus is throwing that snap then he's doing a loop with the hand up and over his head to get the offside. So the hand isn't coming back and recovering over the body uh, or over the head, but what it's doing is generating the power by rotating all the way from here through the elbow and wrist to here. Now Davin picks it up, but that's uh, that's the way I tend to throw a lot of my offsides as well. If I throw a snap out at range, I'll throw some body torque into it to try to throw the offside there, whereas Davin would probably throw that by doing a lot of... Um, body rotation and weight transfer from one leg to the other, if that makes any sense. Marcus does it with a bit of a jump. Now Marcus is going for the shield pull. So Davin shields come forward. You can see Marcus is going for the shield hook and the second offside. He's hoping the shield hook's going to get the shield out of position. Looks like it maybe bounces off the top of the head a little bit. Pretty tough to shield hook Davin. He's a strong dude. If we watch this at speed, it looks like Davin's probably saying you tagged me in the head, but it felt funny. I don't know. Let's let's actually watch it, not in slow-mo. And let's see how that worked. Yeah, I think it sounded like he said a bit of contact, something like that. Um, microphone on the, the recording's not great, so I don't know. Again, just pickups is not a tournament, so they're both out just fighting for a good time. But you can sort of see how that uh, how that played out. All right, so again, I keep going backwards instead of forwards. I apologize, so continue on through the fight. I should probably zoom out a little bit. And I'll probably only go about 20 minutes on this analysis, so may not get through the whole thing. So again, Davin, they're really threatening that thrust. Marcus backs out of range when he sees the threat. Now, oh, if we go back a little bit, sorry. Here we can see they're positioning at range. Marcus acting sort of casual, drops his sword. Uh-oh, real threat. He's actually chambered up a low shot. That's a little bit of a weird shot, but Marcus is pretty good at the wrap. So he's good at getting power on a wrap from a position most people wouldn't. To a lot of people, this is not a wind-up to a wrap, but Marcus can throw a wrap from just about anywhere. Davin knows it. So he gets the leg block in. Marcus being sneaky, trying to wrap the Duke when it looks like he's helpless. All right, moving on. Ah, okay, so we get back into... Oh, did I go backwards again? I probably did, didn't I? Yep. <laughs> I apologize. I will get used to this. All right, so getting back into exchanges. Let's just watch this at speed. That's a really good angle. I don't know that we necessarily need to see it slow. That's something that uh, uh, Marcus was just getting lazy, I think. Uh, if we go here, you can see he's in range. His shield started to drop down. Davin's just hunting. Now look, when Marcus throws his offside, he's popping the shield out. But he's not putting it forward. He's not pushing it towards Davin. He's not going this way out. What he's done is just sort of rotate it this way. And that gives, especially with Marcus's sword now out here, that gives Davin this nice angle right there. To, to um, All Davin needs to do is rotate this hand down. And that'll bring the tip of the sword this way, and he can sink it between Marcus's shield and sword to get the slot. And I don't remember if that's exactly the shot he throws, but let's find out. So he, there's that opening comes up. Oh, it's actually he throws it later. Never mind. Yeah, ignore me. Oh. Tch. Because I'm going backwards again. <laughs> so there's the shot, right? Okay, so is that the shot I said? Yeah. So here the shield comes out. Sorry, I was going backwards. 
Remember all the, the lines on the screen? I was saying the sword would come down between the sword and shield. So there's that Moulin A. Davin drops it right down behind the point of Marcus' shield. And that, again, is just because Marcus, instead of pushing his shield toward Davin, point out, uh, rotated it away from his body. Um, and Marcus knows exactly what happened there. That was just sort of, we're doing pickups. I was thinking of something. I was trying something. Here, Marcus throws a shot just to tie up Davin's uh, sword. It's just a straight down chop. That's Marcus just messing with people. Davin, tough to mess with, immediately rolls off. This doesn't freeze him up at all. Rolls in for that snap to the head, probably. Yep. Now, Marcus, being cagey, has both ducked and stepped while raising his shield, so it just whiffs. Marcus now is frozen into that wide stance, though. So it takes him a second to recover. He's now throwing a wide onside shot. Throwing it, this offside that he just threw right here, probably just to keep Davin busy. That crossbody offside that Marcus throws, it's a, it's a diagonal down chop at this angle, is usually thrown just to keep people at bay against uh, a right-handed swordsman. So that, that diagonal from, if, if you're Marcus throwing from your upper left to your lower right, that's mostly just keeping folks busy. So that shot, that's what we were seeing there. Um, I should probably stop pretty soon, but let's just get a little bit further into the fight. I need to get that off the screen. If I can figure out how. I don't know how to undo that line. There we go. Okay. So let's just watch the rest of this at speed and we'll talk. So, <laughs> yeah, that was Davin getting fast and keyed up. That's Davin at speed there. So Marcus took the leg shot and was recovering. Davin was continuing his combo. That's Davin getting fast. Oh, we know that guy. That's King Christian. All right, so Marcus has a shield pretty flat against his body. He's in good defense. You see that double body pop? Marcus will often do that for power or to feint. So that first little, it's sort of like a, a, to me it looks like sort of like squeezing a squeeze box. That generates some power and tension across the body. Um, but then the second shot always involves a drop of weight. So uh, you, you squeeze the body for tension, then drop or hop down to yank the sword down. It's, a, it's something that, I don't know if I'm describing it right, but you see Marcus do a lot. And because the plate is always accentuated by the sound, I think Davin, yeah, Davin snap got clean there. So now that Davin's getting real fast, that deep rap may or may not have landed. Um, now that Davin's getting real fast, I would recommend going to more of a sword forward guard. And that might be it for the video. Pretty good fights. So uh, all in all, I can say that fighting Davin for me personally is that's my secret tactic for getting super warmed up. Uh, <laughs> he's a scary, dangerous fighter. I mean, he's not dangerous because he's not in control. You feel like your life is in jeopardy because Davin has such good shot mechanics and excellent power um, that he can uncork on anyone uh, at just about any time. So when I fight Davin, I get so keyed up that I'm immediately fighting at my sort of like fight or flight uh, level of uh, awareness. I really feel as though some apex predator has come to kill me. So, um, you know, pickups with Davin are always somewhat intense for me. Um, all in all, I'm seeing a lot of the same stuff that um, I would have expected from Marcus. Uh, the, the only couple things that I saw that were a little bit atypical um, in my experience were shield positioning. Shield got a little bit out of position, rotated, uh, leaving the leg open for a couple shots, leaving the head open for one or two shots. And then the other thing is, uh, I, it was Sir Marcus who taught me, when you get in close range against a fast fighter, you have to bring the sword forward to protect the head. At long range or against slower fighters, you leave the sword back to get some extra power um, in the tendons and ligaments in your shoulder. But you've got to start getting that forward high guard against the really fast dudes. All right. Uh, Hopefully that is helpful.